good morning, happy Sunday, and welcome home to Pleasant Valley Church. My name is Terry, and I am so glad that you have chosen to worship with us here this morning. If this is one of your first times worshiping with us, an extra special welcome to you. I'm so glad that you're here. I'd love to connect with you and see if there's any way that I or we as a church can love and serve you. Maybe there's something we can be praying about for you. Maybe there's another need that we can begin to address. Simply give me a call or send me an email and we'll begin that conversation. In return, I would love to send you this free book called Stronger, How Hard Times Reveal God's Greatest Power. You know, two things are really true about Pleasant Valley Church. We really love God and we really love people. We call loving God worship where we love God back because he first loved us. And there's a few different expressions that we'll be engaging in this morning. We're going to love God back through our voices as we sing to him. We're going to love God back as through our finances as we give back to him a portion of the income of the salary that he's allowed us to earn this week. And there's a number of different ways that that can take place this morning. You can text to give, text 84321 and follow the link. You can give online, just follow the link off our PleasantValleyChurch.com website, or you can arrange for a porch drop-off or pickup. Whatever way you're most comfortable with is fine with us. We love God through our voices, through our finances. We love God through our conversations with Him. We call that prayer. And you're invited every Wednesday night at 7.30 on Zoom to join us for our all-church prayer rally. We have seen God do some amazing things as we have prayed. And you're invited to participate in that. We love God and we love people. There's a number of different expressions of loving people that are taking place in and through Pleasant Valley Church these days. In just a few short days, we're going to be beginning our community gardens. We're going to be preparing the soil, planting, and then uh, keeping up with the, the growth of those plants so that we can give all of the produce to our community neighbors. It's a great way that we can love our neighborhood. If you're interested in that, whether it's in preparing the soil or in ongoing maintenance of the gardens, uh, contact Kim Hansen or you can contact me at the church office and I'll put you in touch with Kim. A great way that we can love and serve. As well, we're gonna be continuing to receive egg cartons. Our partnering food bank at the Salvation Army has a farmer who is donating farm fresh eggs, uh, but there is a need for egg cartons. So if that's something that you're able to, uh, to participate in, simply hold on to your egg cartons. We'll collect them on the last Sunday or the last week of the month, and, and then we'll bring them in to the Salvation Army. So another great way that we can love our neighbors, love our community. Tonight at 6.30, there is an opportunity for us, if you're not currently connected into a life group, why don't you join us on Zoom for our online life group. We're going through the book of Titus and you're invited to participate in this great group. Church, I'm so excited about the service this morning and about the message that God is going to be sharing with us. Let's pray as we begin this morning. Heavenly Father, good morning. Thanks for a brand new day, a brand new day to be loved by you, and a brand new day for us to love you back. Lord, that's our heart's desires through our voices, through our finances, ultimately through our lives. Lord, to love you, to worship you with all that we are. Lord, meet with us as we meet with you. Change us, make us more like you because of this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, hope you can join us right after the service for our Zoom connection time. Last Sunday was one of the most hilarious times that I can ever recall uh, for us gathering together. So hope you can join us right after the service on Zoom. Just follow the link off the church website. God bless you. Let's worship him together.
Today's scripture reading is from Psalm 77. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands, and my soul refused to be comforted. I remembered you, O God, and I groaned. I mused, and my spirit grew faint. Selah. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused and my spirit inquired. Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanquished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Selah. Then I thought, to this I will appeal, the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeem your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. The water saw you, O God, the water saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The skies resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Good morning, Pleasant Valley. Thank you for being with us here this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know we serve an amazing God. And Lord, as we gather here together, we are thankful. We are thankful that even though there is so much going on in this world, Lord, that we as a body of believers can get together and learn more about you, Lord, and learn more about what your word has to say to our lives each and every day. Lord, you know the struggles that are going on with um, the people within this church, Lord, and Though you've answered so many prayers in so many magnificent ways, Lord, we still continue to lift these up to you. Lord, for we know that when we are suffering, Lord, that you are there with us. And we don't suffer for an unknown reason. Lord, you know why we are suffering. And part of that is to show the world that no matter where we are and what we're doing, Lord, that you are there and you are sovereign. So, Lord, as we um, learn more about weakness and your strength Lord I just pray that you would open our hearts and minds and uh, Lord uh, minister to each one of our hearts this morning as we hear from your word in Jesus name Amen. well thanks worship team are you at all like me do you like watching those funny videos where people get off of a spinny ride and they're all dizzy or or where people make themselves dizzy by spinning around. You know, they, they look for something that will give them support and stability, even though they're dizzy. And when they don't find it, they often fall down. And that's when we laugh. Well, it's not so funny when it's us. When it's us in the physical life or when it's us emotionally or spiritually. You know, sometimes we can get emotionally and spiritually dizzy even worse than that we can become in agony from the situation that we might be in so so what do you do when you're at a point of weakness what do you do when you're in agony when your faith doesn't seem to provide the answers or the strength that you're looking for this morning, I want to talk to us about how we can move from agony to assurance. This morning, we're going to be looking at a prayer journal. We call it the Book of Psalms, but 
We're going to be looking at one psalm in specific. It's the one that Jan just read for us. It's a psalm of Asaph. Asaph was one of King David's worship leaders. And Asaph wrote this, this prayer, wrote this entry in his prayer journal to Jeduthun. Jeduthun was the choir director or the lead musician. And in this account, in this psalm, we see Asaph moving from agony to assurance. Follow along with me. Psalm 77. Asaph writes, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands and my soul refused to be comforted. I remembered you, O oh God, and I groaned. I mused, and my spirit grew faint. Selah. But what does that word Selah mean? It, it's a, a Hebrew phrase, it's a Hebrew word, and it means interlude, or pause, or think about it. Think about what was just written. So let's do what Asaph wanted us to do and, and just pause and, and reflect on what he just wrote. The first truth that we can take from Asaph's writing is this. Faith will be tested. Faith will be tested. Even with real, authentic faith, there are times of struggle. You know, no one is immune to weakness or disappointment or discouragement. Like Asaph, in our need, we need to pray. But sometimes we don't feel like we've been heard. Sometimes we feel disconnected from God. Asaph did. He wrote, my soul refused to be comforted. My spirit grew faint. Verses 2 and 3, it, it seems as if God is not answering. You know, we cry out to God, but we feel alone. Here's the first sign of agony. It's that we feel spiritually alone. But we don't want to stay there in that state of feeling spiritually alone. So here's a first step that we can take that will move us from agony to assurance. Here's the first step. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. Tell God how you feel. It's interesting that Asaph goes to God in his disappointment. He doesn't go to other sources. He journaled it out. And we have record of his thoughts, of his feelings, of his prayer. You know, when we don't go to God, we learn to medicate our pain, often in unhelpful ways. When we don't go to God, we may gossip, we may slander, we make food or drugs or busyness our priority in order to, to numb the pain that we may be in. Or it could be relationships or over-involvement or withdrawal, Asaph cries out to God with his feelings. Faith will be tested. Moving from agony to assurance, we need to cry out to God. Let's continue to verse 4. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago, I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused and my spirit inquired, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Selah. Pause. Think. Reflect on what Asaph just wrote. You know, here we see 
Asaph sharing some more signs of agony, the agony that he was in, but the agony that we as well can relate to. Here's another sign of agony. We focus internally. We focus in on ourselves. Here's how Asaph experienced it in verse 4. He writes, you kept my eyes from closing. In other words, a sign of agony is when we focus internally, we lose sleep. Have you lost any sleep this week or this month or through this year? That's a sign that not everything is as it should be. We focus internally, we lose sleep. Secondly, in verse 4, Asaph writes, he's, he's too troubled to speak. He can't even put the words to, to what he's feeling. In other words, he withdraws. And sometimes we do that when we're in agony. We don't want to see or hear anyone. And we shut the doors and we withdraw. Here's a third sign of, of agony as we focus inwardly. In verse 5, Asaph writes, I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. A sign of agony is that we long for the good old days, but we remember only the good from those days. We don't remember the, the pain of those days that inevitably was there. But a sign of agony as we focus inwardly, we remember the good old days. Fourthly, as we focus inwardly, verse 6, Asaph writes about, about the songs in the night. Really, I think what he's getting at there is we lose our joy. We're even joyful songs, songs that we loved in years gone by. It it doesn't do it for us as we're in that agony, as we're emotionally and spiritually dizzy. Asaph gives those signs of agony in that we focus inwardly. But not only that, we ask emotionally loaded questions. Look at verse 7 and following. Asaph writes, Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? You know, it's okay to have questions of God. Even Jesus had questions of God. Even, even on the cross, Jesus asked the question, My God! My God, why have you forsaken me? And it's not a sin to ask God questions, but it may be a sin to demand of God immediate answers in our favor. And the reality is, sometimes God does go quiet, and we don't hear him as we once did. You know, when... When you're dizzy physically, you can't hear, you can't focus in on anything. That's what contributes to our, our dizziness. Two cautions for us. Number one, don't mistake God's silence for his absence. So just because we can't hear God, it does not mean that God is not there. You know, often with teachers... Teachers go silent when they're giving their class a test. A teacher doesn't offer counsel or, or training. A teacher goes silent when they're giving their class the test. Don't mistake God's silence for his absence. Secondly, don't trust your feelings. Emotions are unreliable leaders of faith. And we can make bad decisions when we just base it on emotion. You know, our, our feelings, our subjective experience and emotions may be unreliable. You know, 18 times as we look at Psalm 77, 18 times in six verses, Asaph uses the personal pronoun I or me. It's very subjective. It's, it's all about me. Emotions are unreliable leaders of faith. Remember this, our faith in Jesus 
is not based on what we see or feel. Our faith in Jesus is not based on what we see or feel. Secondly, our faith in Jesus is not based on things getting better or God answering our prayers. That's not what our faith is all about. Our faith in Jesus is not based on what we see or feel. Our faith in Jesus is not based on things getting better or God answering our prayers. Pastor Terry, how then do we move from agony to assurance? Here's what Asaph did, and here's what we need to do. To move from agony to assurance, here's step number two. Lose your eye. What? Pastor Terry, lose your eye? Yeah, yeah, not your physical eye, but your eye. You know, all those times that Asaph said, I felt, I thought, I did. Lose your eye. Put your sight not on yourself, but put your focus on God. Put truth and not emotions in charge. In other words, put the truth into action. Well, God does love me. God is with me. So I will, so I can go with God has go with what God has said rather than how we feel. You know, emotions can overwhelm our thoughts and negatively impact our actions. Have you ever said or posted something that you regret because you were angry or upset at the time? Sure, we we all have. How do we move from agony to assurance to have that rock solid stability in our life? Well, we lose our eye. We don't have the focus on ourselves. We put our focus on the unchanging permanence and the reality of God. Lose your eye. Take action on what you know is true about God from his unchanging word. Change your focus from your immediate situation to the unchanging, sovereign, good God who loves you. Lose your eye. Verse 10. Then I thought, to this I will appeal, the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Your ways, O Lord, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles you display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Salah. Pause. Just reflect on what was just written. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The skies resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waves, through the mighty waters. Through your foot, though your footprints were not seen, you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Here's the third truth about our faith. Faith affirms the focus and the relationship in God. Faith affirms and, uh, faith affirms the focus and the relationship on God. So what was Asaph doing here as he was writing? Two things. He was acknowledging God, acknowledging who God is. Look at verse 13. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? Asaph was acknowledging who God was. Not only that, Asaph was acknowledging what God has done. Verse 14, he performs miracles. He displays power. He redeems you see, Asaph's focus changed from that eye focus 
to a God focus. He saw who God was. He saw what God did and was doing. The turning point for Asaph is in verse 13, where there is no longer that I focus. It's a focus exclusively on God. And then in verses 16 through 20, Asaph re was reminded of who God is and all that God has done. We would be wise to follow in Asaph's footsteps. In, in doing what he did and taking our focus off of ourselves, off of our situation, and putting them on to God. So here's step number three in moving from agony to assurance. Get to know God better, especially through his word. Get to know God better, especially through his word. You know, we can have peace with God even when we don't have an answer from God. We can have peace with God even when we don't get an answer from God. We can have peace with God even even when we have questions. You know, there is a connection between the amount of confidence we have in God and the amount of scripture we incorporate into our life. <clears throat> and when you get disappointed in life, when you get betrayed, when you get surprised or let down, the truth of God's word is our best weapon to fight that agony because when scripture speaks god is speaking here asaph chose to focus on god the truth of who god is and what he has done and he moved from anguish to assurance that god was with him he was anchored onto the truth and not onto his feelings Look at verses 19 and 20 again. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters. Though your footprints were not seen, you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. That phrase is so powerful. In fact, I think it's inspired um, art and, and pictures and poems though your footprints were not seen. You know, we can't always see God's footprints as we're dizzy, but we can always trust his love for us. We can always trust his love for us in this life, and we can always trust his love for us for the life to come. We can move from agony to assurance even when the sea billows roll, whatever my lot, God, you have taught me to say it is well with my soul. You know, we're going to sing that song in, in just a few moments. But can I ask you this morning, is it well with your soul? Are you like Asaph was in the early verses of his journal where he's in agony where he's questioning God, where he doesn't have that, that assurance that God is with him. Have you trusted Jesus as your forgiver and as your leader? Have you trusted him as the foundation in your life? And if you haven't, you can this morning. It begins by admitting, admitting that we are powerless and that we are out of control admitting that we are lost and broken before God, that we have rebelled against God and against his ways. We, we admit that we are sinners, that we deserve the consequences for our sin. But secondly, we believe. We believe that Jesus is God and that he died on the cross for our sins and that he was raised from the dead to show that forgiveness for our sins was paid in full. We, we admit that we're sinners. We believe that Jesus is God and that he, he died on the cross for us. Thirdly, we commit. We commit our lives to following Jesus all the days of our lives. That's, that's where we can have the rock-solid confidence, the assurance 
for this life and for the life to come. If you've never invited Jesus to be your forgiver and leader, you can. Pray a prayer, something like what I'm going to pray this morning. Dear Jesus, since I'm being honest with you, my, my life is a mess right now. And it's a mess because I know that I have rebelled against you. I have sinned against you. And I can't save myself. Jesus, I believe. I believe that you are God, that you are truth. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. You rose from the dead, not because you were guilty, but because I was. Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice on my behalf. And Jesus, now I commit my life to you. I want to follow you all the days of my life. I receive you as my forgiver and as my leader. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you've prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. I would love to connect with you and pass on some resources that can help you grow in your relationship with God. Maybe as you've been worshiping this morning, God has been speaking to you. And you know that your life is just a, a dizzy mess right now. Perhaps because you're so focused on the situation, you've got that I focus rather than the God focus. Can I pray for you this morning as well? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, what is true about our faith is that, that our faith will be tested and that there will be difficult chapters in and with our faith. But Lord, you are with us. And even when we can't see your footprints, we can still trust your presence we can still trust your goodness. Lord, for those of us this morning that are really struggling, Lord, where we are in agony, we are dizzy, we are confused, Lord, we need you. So Lord, in as real a way as you can, would you let us know that you are there with us? Lord, show us through your word, your, your power and your presence. Lord, help us to anchor deeply, to have that confidence, that assurance with you, that although the sea billows roll, that our faith is anchored to you, Lord, that it is well with our soul. Lord, we love you, and we need you, and we thank you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, hope you can join us right after the singing of this last song for, for our lobby time on Zoom. Great time, great way that we can connect with each other, that we can celebrate, that we can weep, that we can pray for one another. Hope you can join us. But let's sing this powerful hymn of our faith. It is well with my soul. Let's sing together. <laughs> Oh, 